Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? You slash G underscore Baker responded. I worked with this one guy who had a lengthy record. He had a system for getting released if he got caught. After committing a crime, if the police were in pursuit and he knew he was about to be cornered, he would act insane. His girl would play along with it telling the police that he was off his medication. The police would arrest him but then send him to a mental ward with papers instructing the ward to release to police once he was cleared. Once he was in the mental ward, he would cause a distraction that would make the person attending the desk with the file cabinet to leave said cabinet. He would then crawl to the file cabinet, look for his release to police papers, and then would literally eat the papers. When the psych evaluators decided that he was stable enough to be released, there would be no instructions to send him to the police, and he would be released to the general public. He did this about 10 times until police officers noticed him back on the streets. This stunt forced the state to change their procedure for detaining mentally unstable suspects. You slash Taylor Inc. 8 responded. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, MP3 players, beer etc. and throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes five hours until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. You slash Niven fan responded. I heard about one person that pulled a shoplifting scam on a large, popular, and well-known US retail store. They walked in with some cheap nylon product to get one of those I walked in with this stickers they used to put on returning merchandise. The sticker easily peeled off the product undamaged. They walked to the electronics department, grabbed an expensive box off the shelf and went to customer service. They placed the sticker on the big box and asked if they could return the item without a receipt. Unfortunately, no. Not without the original receipt. Dang it, and they walk out. Customer service even gave the doorman the thumbs up having just interacted with the customer. This took place before widespread inventory controls and cameras absolutely everywhere. You slash Whistle Ridge responded. This was in the late 90s early noughties. A guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans, registered for a bunch of 300-person freshman survey courses where he would never be missed, then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual I was young and dumb and in over my head sob story, and got put on probation for a semester. So he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out, and didn't care. He made something on the order of $150,000, in return for about $8,000 in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run, but in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. You slash Miguago Esprego responded. Most of them are really stupid so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jeweler's on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jeweler's was empty and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night, massive headache for the police and the business, we turned up to see nothing there, nothing on cameras, thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall, had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking his sweet time. Escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. You slash cog hero responded. Worked at a jail. After getting off work, I watched an ex-inmate, homeless, being released, he walked over to a patrol car, looked me in the eye, and the elbowed the window in. He was walked back to the entrance and rebooked in. It was middle of January. He didn't want to get too cold. Edit. To the people talking about can't break car windows. That's true. Also depends on the car. The patrol car they used was specifically old model. Used more for the perimeter of the jail unless other patrol cars were in the shop. Those windows had been replaced so many times. IDK if it's the same material or what. And for the ones asking for news links, come on guys, you really think the news reports small time things? Those aren't dramatic enough. I could probably find their charges and stuff and share, 
but I'm not gonna do that to this guy. He was a nice guy. Not a dick. I'm not gonna put him on blast just to prove anything to people for karma or anything along those lines. You slash that underscore other underscore guy underscore responded. One guy would print barcodes, bring them into Home Depot and stick them on merchandise in the $100 range. When scanned the items came up around the $10 range. Putting random barcodes on things ISNT really illegal and super hard to notice. Guy 2 would come in an hour later and buy the underpriced stuff. Complete plausible deniability. They would then sell the stuff on eBay. Only reason they got caught is because the guy with the barcode printer software cut the second guy out of the operation so Guy 2 stole a bunch of barcodes, put them on the merchandise and paid for it immediately afterwards. He then proceeded to rat on the first guy and spilled the beans they had been doing this on a weekly basis for over four years. Because we could only pin the one case on him, the burglary was dropped down to a pretty theft and he walked away with a few days in county and a small fine. Dude probably took Home Depot for tens of thousands over the years. You slash deleted responded. Probably someone who committed a crime I never solved. With that being said I had a guy use a sledgehammer to smash his way through a wall at a Best Buy and steal a bunch of phones and cameras. He was smart enough to wear gloves and a face mask and not touch anything he didn't have to. Alarms didn't go off until he exited out the back door, which the alarm company gets after a minute or two and takes them like three quarters minutes to call into us, giving him a good five minute head start so he was probably a few miles away before we got dispatched to it. He clearly scoped out the area before doing his deed too. Smart dude. Edit. So part of the building was built into a hill, so the hole was on the backside of the building along the grade line but when you're inside the building it was about eight feet up, so it was easier for him to leave out a door. Also the wall section where he broke through was hollow cement block, the portion of the wall below that was poured concrete. You slash deleted responded. Here's one. I knew this guy back in the early 80s, let's call him Jim. Well he really wanted this high-powered superbike but he knew he couldn't ever afford it, so what he did was to take drive to London and scouted about for a few days until he found that particular model parked outside a house. He goes back that night with a slide hammer, pulls the lock, and steals the bike. He gets it home, puts it in his garage and completely strips it so that the only thing left is the frame and the bottom half of the engine, which he drags into the weeds at the bottom of his garden, then he pours fuel over it and burns it a bit. A few weeks pass and weeds have started growing over it. It's at that point he calls the cops and reports that someone had dumped a bike frame in his garden. The cops show up and he explains that he just got back from being away and found it. The cops take the frame and note down high name and address. A few days later, the cops call him and say that the bike had been stolen from London a month or so ago, from the serial number on the bottom half of the engine and frame, and that the insurance company had classed the bike as a write-off, and had told the cops to dispose of it. Now! Because the frame was found in his garden and the insurance company didn't want it, the cops were duty-bound to ask him if he wanted to keep it, or if they should throw it. So he tells them that he'd always wanted to build a bike. He gets the fame back from them, repaints it, then puts it all back together and re-registers it as a Q-reg, stolen and recovered. I forgot to call him Jim didn't I? You slash Rosie11 responded. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river, the only way between the two sides is over a long bridge, unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in, like, two to three bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge. I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge. And started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. I first heard this story about 10 years ago, in Banff, Alberta. Never bothered to look up what was real versus what is invented. I think this is pretty close. But as my father used to say, you can't let truth get in the way of a good story. You slash deleted responded. I have a friend who is no longer a criminal but committed crimes for about 15 years and never got arrested or even investigated. Some of his highlights. Growing weed in a shed on his neighbor's property. The neighbor was old and never left the house. Buying a building under a fake name, taking out huge loans against it, getting HUD money, and burning it all down. Sold fake raffle tickets to raffle off stuff he never had and never raffled. I can't remember how many times he pulled that scam but he bow a new car with the money. He moved a bunch of times because people would suspect him of being a con man. His dad was in jail for similar stuff. But he was never even questioned by the police about anything. Now he has a family and a normal job. You slash connect me responded. Mandatory not a police officer but. 
The story of the Mumbai Opera House jewelry heist probably belongs here. Sometime in 1987 a guy placed an ad in the newspaper, looking for recruits to the CBI, the investigative police agency in India. A bunch of people showed up. He'd rented an office to interview them. He selected 26 of the candidates, told them to assemble the next day near a popular jewelry shop to practice a mock raid. He had a fake search warrant and all handy. Then he led these guys to conduct a raid on the jewelry shop. Together they collected all the jewelry in the shop, took all the cash, and then he asked the trainees to keep a watch on the shop employees while he deposited the stuff. He then walked out and disappeared. Took half an hour for someone to suspect something wrong and call the actual police. They never caught the guy. Never even found out who he was. The balls on that man. You slash Tegler responded. Not a cop, and wouldn't call this the smartest thing ever, but it was pretty amusing and clever. A while back, there was a series of thefts along the bus lines in my country. People's things kept missing from one city to the next, and nobody had any idea what happened as things were presumably safe in the bottom of the bus which nobody except the driver had the access to. What happened? Apparently there were two guys, one of whom was really small. You get where this is going. The big guy would put the little guy in a suitcase, buy a ticket to somewhere, load him up with the rest of the luggage, and enjoy the ride, while the little guy went out, stole people's electronics, jewelry, cameras, and whatnot, then returned to his suitcase until the ride was over. Not really sure how they caught them, but it was pretty amusing to read about, and I found the whole thing clever enough. You slash keenly underscore disinterested responded. The story goes like this, a homeowner walks out one morning to drive to work only to find his car missing. He reports the car stolen to police. A few days later, his car is sitting back in front of his house. When he gets inside he finds a note. It was an apology that said the thief was in dire need of quick transportation and so he borrowed the first car he found with the keys inside. The writer noticed the sticker on the car for the local sports team, and just so there were no hard feelings, he left four tickets to an upcoming game in the glove box for the homeowner and his family. So the homeowner and his family attend the game, but when they return home they find the house has been ransacked and all items of value are gone. Edit. Some of you have noted this is an urban legend, which is true. It is also true that some urban legends have a basis in fact. You slash kitchen bomber responded. Not a cop. There was an incident in Fargo, North Dakota where a guy wanted to steal electronics equipment. The store had plenty of alarms on it and generally cutting an alarm triggers an alarm so instead he cut all the alarms. This was before cell phones were really widespread and alarms were usually just connected to the phone line. He found an access point to one of the phone company's big trunk lines, correction, nine access points. Massive thick copper cables with tens of thousands of lines running through them. He cut through the whole thing with a circular saw, knocked out phone service to most of the town and robbed an audio store during the ensuing chaos. There were no leads until a tip came in from another town where he'd pulled something similar. They hadn't been able to pin that to him but had strong suspicions and he'd relocated to Fargo. So the cops pay him a visit. He refused to let them in because they didn't have a warrant so the cops left to get one without leaving anyone to watch him and he split. When they came back they found the saw coated in copper dust and a lot of the stolen stuff. He was in the wind for a while but even after he got caught he had another card to play. While being transported between prisons he used a key he'd made to unlock his shackles and climbed out the roof vent of the bus. You slash mojo for my dojo responded. Possible urban myth but I like it, somewhere in England there was this car park outside a local tourist attraction. Because it was city land a booth was set up to collect parking fees. It cost something like $5 per pounds per euros to park. The old man collecting the fees was a pleasant chap, never missed a day of work in 10 years, rain or shine. One day the tourist attraction hears there is nobody manning the booth. Because it is a city-owned lot, they call the city to ask where the parking attendant is. The city says what parking attendant? Old man was never heard or seen again. He built the booth himself and manned it for 10 years. You slash Frerky 5 responded. A guy, let's call him Dave, I worked with told this story, he was working at a Mercedes dealership, he was sitting at his desk when this well-dressed gentleman comes in and asks if he could test drive a specific car that was parked out front. It was also a busy day. Usually they are allowed to let people test drive by themselves after they have taken some form of a deposit or something, maybe the official ID or something, not really relevant. So Dave gives out the keys, the guy goes on his test drive and comes back a reasonable amount of time later. He walks in and hands off the key, gets his deposit whatever back. This was about closing time, even possibly on a Friday. Everything is in order. 
Fast forward to the next business day. Dave's boss walks in and realizes that one of the Mercedes out front is gone. Dave has to explain that the car was returned and that they have the key and everything. Turns out the criminal didn't test drive, he drove somewhere to create a replica of the key and gave that replica back to the desk. He kept the real key. That smart son of a bitch. Edit. Dave is not the criminal. He is the employee. Apparently people think Dave is the criminal, laughing face. Edit 2, it was probably part of this group. Edit 3, okay maybe the key wasn't copied but switched or something. I didn't put much thought into the details of the story since Dave told me this story a few years ago. I also don't know much about key security on modern cars. You slash Jim 653 responded. Not a cop and this is not as smart as some of the guys on here but it's probably one of the smartest robberies in my small city. One of the main streets is cut into a hillside and, as a result, there is a very steep and quite tall concrete covered bank immediately behind the buildings. Between two buildings there is a gap that was filled at the street end by an ATM. To access it for filling, the security staff went through the next door building, out a side door and into the gap, which had the ATM at one end and the steep bank at the other. On the Friday before Christmas, when the ATM was to be filled to the brim, one of the robbers abseiled down the bank at night into the gap and waited for the guys to arrive to fill the ATM, they came early in the morning. As they came through the door into the gap, he held them up, took the money, and took off through the building to an accomplice waiting in a van on the main street. Then the van took off on the main road out of the city and vanished. After a big search, the police finally found the burnt-out van. Turned out the gang had driven it up a gorge road and had two other accomplices in cars at the top and bottom of the gorge who simultaneously drove really slowly into the gorge and held up the traffic so that no one was there to see them when they turned off down an access road into some bush. They ended up being caught, because one of the gang was a former employee of the security company. You slash Kropoka responded. Friends older brother and friends used to rob cars. Never did it anywhere except for movie theaters, guaranteed those people aren't coming back out for two hours. They'd take their girlfriends, two guys, two girls, wait in their car, hanging out until they saw a car with too much money, usually booming bass and loud music, which guaranteed a few grand worth of stereo equipment. They'd wait until the driver went in, give it another 30 minutes just to be safe, all walk over together, and use a center punch to knock out the driver's window and push it into the seat in one piece. Immediately they'd open the doors, and cut the alarm wires if there was an alarm going off, and just start hanging out. Even if someone in the lot noticed the alarm and turned to look, they just saw two guys and two girls near a car with the doors open, looking like the driver was a dumbass who forgot to shut off his alarm, which was confirmed when it went off in a few seconds. Then they'd proceed to just clean out the car. Usually amps, subs, speakers, etc. right in broad daylight, with four of them it just looked like some guys working on their stereo. They'd close the doors and then leave. They did this for a year or two before eventually getting caught because a father was waiting for his kids to come out, and saw the entire process happen. They did some time. It was one of the smartest, stupidest things I'd ever heard about. You slash daddy hacks responded. Couple guys came into my old work and stole a grand piano. We had a piano which was never played, so the boss decided to sell it off. Had arranged for a company to come lift the piano, and with a lot of people coming in and out of our work, the topic of the piano so someone obviously caught wind the piano was moving. Come lifting day, a Luton van came in and two guys in high-vis vests got out and mentioned they were here for the piano. They took a good 15 minutes to get the piano out of the building and into the van, and even members of staff assisted with them. They jumped in the van and sped off, no one thought any different and didn't sign anything to say the piano had been handed over. About 40 minutes later, another Luton van turns up, two guys get out and mention they're from the moving company and is here for the grand piano. A lot of confusion around work and laughs thinking someone was at the wind-up. Long story short, the guy who bought the piano never got his piano. You slash antique cop responded. Stopped a guy at night. Willingly pulled over. Was Mr. Nice and had an answer for everything. Mistake was he left night vision on the dash. Which have me grounds to search. Had a perfect toolkit for high-end brakes, radios to reach others in on the act, thermal suits etc. Barrister turned up to interview, offense of going equipped never stood a chance. He was released. On his way out joked he hadn't been stopped in 10 years, even complimented me on being proactive and observant. Record showed loads for burglary then nothing since 2002, two months later a camouflaged server site down the road was hit. 1.5 million in kit went. Police didn't even know it was there. ISP had no idea how the alarms didn't go off and how such specialized kit was difficult to sell. Knew exactly who it was, 
but 0% proof. Nicest prisoner I ever had, you slash podcastman responded. I'm going to relate one I heard from Finn J.D. John from the Offbeat Oregon History Podcast. Around 1850 or so, there was a small boomtown built on top of a near cliff, about a mile long and a hundred feet or so high. The only way up or down was a narrow footpath that ran diagonally up it. A thief barges in on a poker game late one night, bandana over his face and two six-shooters drawn, just like in the movies. Stick em up, they stuck em up. Put the money in this bag. They did, nobody move. He then runs out, jumps on his horse and takes off towards the cliff. Of course the instant they are clear the gamblers run for their horses, shooting and hollering for everyone to come quick and join a posse to catch the thief. The thief and his horse just gallop down the cliff. The entire posse is right behind him and all the horses put on the brakes, hard. They are not going over a cliff in the dark. The thief had spent weeks training his horse. First leading it up and down the trail during the day. Leading it up and down the trail at night. Walking it up and down the trail by day. Walking it up and down the trail at night. Till it was ready to just gallop down the trail at night. You slash nightfall responded. Not a cop, but have a brilliant story. Worked at grocery store. For sales tax reasons, every item is assigned a department code. Booth clerk, underpaid person who counts all tills at end of the night, comes up with a brilliant idea. They created a new department code that didn't exist and then changed several cheap items to that code. When they counted the money at the end of the night they would pocket the cash from that department code. Since the department didn't exist, nothing in the books seemed off. Supposedly got over 100k before being approached. Quit on the spot and was never charged. It took years to figure what had happened and the company was never able to prove who did it. This was early 90s, when computers were still new to businesses and most people didn't know how to use them or what they were capable of. Security was often very lax. Had another employee write small recycling slips for small amounts as well. He would again pocket the money. He got away with 16k if I remember. Eventually got greedy and was caught. Confessed to weigh more than they had on him. U slash euro underscore scening 05 responded. My primary school got robbed of all their new computers when I was a kid. They were so proud of their new computer lab and made a big celebration of it, this was in the dial-up days, when IT was about to boom into the enormous industry it has become. The guys managed to jimmy a window enough to get a stick through and wave it around in front of the motion sensors until they set the alarms off. Of course, being back to base alarms the police would be notified straight away and the thieves would close the window and hide away. So when the cops arrived there would be no sign of forced entry and nothing was missing. So it looked like a faulty alarm. They continued this cycle until the cops got the shits and stopped responding. Then they were free to empty the place out and no one found out until the computer lab teacher unlocked the door the next morning. I never found out if they got busted in the end or not but I like to think they didn't. You slash Willmaster123 responded. My friend's dad was a cop and he used to tell me all kinds of stories. There was a guy who was in a local drug organization run by the Irish who had a fake FBI badge, and he flashed it everywhere when he was around cops. He would sometimes give wrong tips to the cops, leading them in the wrong directions, then he would quickly leave the scene and act as if he had to do something important. The guy would be involved with smuggling and carjacking and murder and everything, but the second cops arrived on the scene, he would just tell them that a source tipped him off this was happening and flash his badge, making it seem as if he just got there before them. Apparently this only worked for a few months, but he said finding out that the FBI guy they worked with was actually a member of the mob was the most embarrassing moment in their department's history. You slash Emil 137 responded. We had a guy come in our shoe store when it was super busy, and he asked to see a pair of shoes like any other customer. They were decently expensive shoes, probably $100 plus and this was maybe 12 years ago. We were busy enough to be juggling between customers and were running back and forth all over the place and understaffed for that kind of rush on a weeknight. Guy sees we aren't paying attention so he puts the shoes on and walks up and down a couple times as if he's testing them out. Once no attention is on him he sneaks two random display shoes in the box, covers them with the tissue paper all nice and walks right out of the store without us knowing and out of the mall. We think the shoes are in the box when we pick it up to put them back. Worker checks the box just before it goes back but the guy is long gone. We check under the benches and also find an abandoned pair of old busted shoes he came in wearing. You slash Nathan underscore black responded. A famous thing that happened a few years ago where I am. The robbers cased out the bank for a good couple of months it seems and one guy had walked in with a heavy duffel bag and after some time had asked where the WCs are and gone in. 
Then another guy wearing the same type of clothing plus bag had walked in and sat down where the previous man was. The bank was too busy to note that the guy who went in never came out and CCTV cam shows the bank guard actually talking to this new man, and later reported in news that the guard had thought it was the same guy, this was on a Friday close to bank closing time. The bank was closed and the first guy had been hiding in the ceiling, got down and gone to the second floor and opened the window and cut through the grill with a small blowtorch. Let in few other guys and proceeded to cut through the safes with heavy-duty blowtorches and stole all the money. The safes are not something like you see in movies, but standard Big Self contained safes with individual alarms which they have deactivated. Around the equivalent of 2 millions US dollar and simply vanished. They are suspected of catching an illegal boat transport to India and fled somewhere after. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, leave your own stories down below I would love to read them. If you would like to see more videos like this please like and subscribe it helps me out greatly.